Let's transition with an object wipe. Yeah, I'll just use my hand. So this technique is actually used in a lot, of, a lot of music videos. If we take a look at this one here, let me mute this actually, we play it. There's an object wipe of two trees. That's actually a couple of trees. That's three trees that they use and they have them layered. Um, so they have one back here and they have one here and then they have this one. This tree actually looks flat if you look at that tree. But playing this through, yeah, you can actually tell that that's a flat picture. But playing this through, you would never be able to tell, um, you know, just normal speed that that's what they used. But it's pretty much just transitioning from one shot to another with some type of object in front of the camera. And that they, they do it there as well. So let's uh, go through on how to build this. So I didn't have a lot of material to do this, but I work with what I have. Uh, I shot this, this stuff a long time ago. So I have this shot of a uh, ski resort. Let me actually mute this. Of a ski resort and a couple of people skiing. And then I have this shot here which is like kind of still and then it moves and has a lot of things that are kind of working against this, but we'll use these. Actually, you know what? Copy this one, grab this one and copy this one as well. Did I just copy the same one twice? Awesome. Let's grab that one. All right, so this shot, as we can tell, is going the opposite way of this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to flip it. So now we are going all the right way. And this whole process is going to be a little different depending on the footage that you're working with. Okay, so for this shot, I want this to pretty much constantly be moving. So I'm going to actually maybe have it start down a little further so something like that and kind of have this uh, overlap at, at any point because this is only really here and as you can see my shot starts kind of on the left side you would like for um, whatever you're working with if you have the ability to film something, you would want the object to wipe the whole screen to make this a little easier. But because I don't have that, uh, there's gonna be a couple extra steps, which is no biggie. I think I'm going to make this a little bigger and I'm going to have this start over here on this side of the screen. I'm gonna throw a keyframe here and then by the end of it, I'm gonna have it move over to here. So if we play this, there's our wipe, and then the guy comes out from the other side. So now I actually have to make these two look like they were um, sort of the same. So we have a hard edge, obviously, here. We have a couple of branches that come off, and they would actually work really well um, if we just add it like, a uh, alpha, as you can see here, we layered them. It'll the alpha will allow the other layers to see through. So your the alpha will make things invisible, and then you have to mask what the alpha is. So if I was to take this little guy and flip it, now I have an alpha mat, and I could come up to the edge here, feather this go like that and that sort of looks like it could work right so um, the only other thing that you would have to do is you would have to match the movement but because I did the movement for I did the movement for the uh, the shot itself instead of the power window the because the shots moving the power window is mapped to that shot, that uh, power window will move with it as well. So if we watch it, the power window is moving with it as well, 
but in the in the shot the uh the, the frame didn't stay the same so in the shot the tree was here and the tree moves to the to the side so now i have to match my power window with that same movement so let's go back to let's go to the first frame and if we look at this you can see where you know these don't match up what i could do let me turn this off is i could um key i could build a, build a qualifier here and you could do something like this where you have you build a qualifier so that all these like little twigs come out um but that gets kind of that gets kind of difficult when you have things that are out of focus because you won't get a sharp uh, qualifier. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna stick with what we have with using this power window because I think that that is actually kind of, kind of good. But we need to uh, add a little bit of, of movement into here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to the tracker and go into frame and then where I had it pretty good right here if I move this it's going to make a little keyframe so now I could come back over here and I could line this up again so something like that now let's watch that through okay that's kind of for the beginning half like right in here eh, it's okay I think I might want to um, adjust this just a little bit what would happen to my uh, I'm on the wrong shot. Okay, adjust this just a little bit. So maybe here, we'll bring it in just a little bit. And then as we get over to, let's say here, let's just move this out of frame. For the most part, it's following. It is sliding around just a little bit, trying to match. Let's see how this looks. Okay, that doesn't look terrible, but you can see like right here, it's in focus. And then by over here, it's out of focus. So that looks a little weird. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make a frame or a uh, node before, and I'm going to add directional blur because it's so close to the camera and we're panning you would normally have directional blur. So you would have that, that motion blur in there. So I'm gonna add some of that. So directional blur, I'm gonna drop that in. And then for um, blur angle, if we look at it, oh, let's close all this other stuff. If we look at this now, it looks like the blur angle's kind of going up. So if I actually go to zero, then it looks like it's, correct but that's way too much so maybe something like that and then that's on number two so if we come down to uh, open effects and then I adjust this what's going on here oh the corrector one corrector two open effects and we set that and then as we get over to here so i would say kind of like right in here we want to drop this down so we don't have it anymore or not as much so let's have it go to there then by the time it gets here then it you know, finishes off All right, the only other thing that I can think of now, it's just that it's almost like it's too slow. So we could do a couple of things. We could speed up the shots altogether. Um, we could come into here and our positions that we keyframed, we could make the keyframes, let's zoom in a bit. We could make these keyframes a little closer together so if we make them closer together, then it's gonna happen quicker. All right. So let's actually have it maybe out here. 
bring it in a little bit. Okay, and then we would have to bring it over quite a bit. Okay, so something like that maybe. And as you can see, when it cuts over to here, we have a black line. And that is because our um, directional blur is currently on black. If we do like reflect, then we won't have that. So let's watch this through quick. Okay, that is pretty good. Some other things that we could do is we did um, zoom it in a little bit. So we could do, we could add a little, little more to this. So like, let's say right in here, keyframe this. And then by the time it gets out to here, maybe pull out some of that. Maybe like this, let's see what happens now. All right, and then we have this little drop down. We can put uh, Bezier curves on this so it like eases in and out a little smoother. Whoa, where were we? So something like that, maybe a little less. Uh, like I said, with with all of your shots, this is going to be a little different. Um, I kind of don't like the dead space, like right in here. So what we could do also is we could change the um, the speed. So for like from here. To right there's where he comes in. So in here we could speed this up a little bit. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, now it's very chunky that's you know going smooth and then speeding up so could add those curves into here as well and speed that up a little bit. So that's pretty much how you could do that. Then what we could also do to add to this effect is we could throw in a sound effect. So let me find a sound effect quick. Okay. Let's try this one. Well, that almost so now I have my sound effect, but it still doesn't match up. So we need to uh, increase this speed quite a bit. All right, that kind of works. At least it's the building blocks that's something that would work. There's many different ways to do it. The, the primary things that you want to do is you have your shot underneath and you have the shot that you want to wipe with and you have to make an alpha mat of one going to the other. And then you want them to go in the same direction or um, 
in directions that won't clash. So you wouldn't want them to go, you know, this way and then you have a panning shot going that way because that, I don't know, it would kind of clash. And the idea with transitions is to make them seem seamless and not that jarring going from one shot to another. So a lot of ways to make uh, the shot more exciting and and to kind of help sell effects is using sounds. So, I, I mean, if I if I added in a bunch of music in here, let me grab a track quick. So if I was to take this track here, just jump halfway in, and we'll just cut it there, and we will drag it below, and turn it down just a little bit, and we played it. I'm gonna miss you. Dead. Okay, that was a little intense for the for this channel. So if we just drop that down a little bit. Okay. Now let's watch this. I'm gonna miss you We fought so hard we drag us down. Work if you ask me. And with that being said, let me know what you think down in the comments. Again, my name's JR and thanks for watching.